Hi guys, it's Karen, and I'm back with episode eight of my Craft Fair 2019 series. I apologize for not being able to be back sooner, but um, my work has been like super, super busy, uh, working eight to five and all on the weekends a lot of the times too. So not a lot of time to craft and um, plug out the Craft Fair series, but I'm trying to get back on target because around the corner, I've got my first Craft Fair it's a double header. Um, I got three actually in a row, September and October. So I've got to get busy replenishing my stock. The, now the ones I'm going to show you today, these I'm going to call as my list pad holders. And they are for the uh, notepads you can purchase at any departments or like Walmart or, you know, any of those dollar stores, that type of thing. Um, they come, I found the cheapest ones at actually Walmart for 88 cents, so that beats Dollar Tree pricing. So that's where I usually pick them up, but if I can find them on sale, that's super great. Um, the only thing is sometimes they don't really come, they kind of come standard, like greens and purples and pinks and blacks, but once in a while you can find a nice little print. So. I was happy with that and at the very end I made 18 of these so I can show you different designs now the paper I used um, all the products are from Stampin Up some of the paper is retired and some is not I also all the stamp sets I'm using in the project are all um, current and you can purchase at inspiredbygram.com so I love to use inspirational sentiments so you'll see always um, positive kind of inspiring sentiments on my projects and also the dies I use in the punches we'll be using a punch today we're actually going to make this sentiment here um, but I usually all the dies are also current and I used um, what I've been doing is to try to keep a little bit more organized in my craft room is I have these magnet sheets which I purchased at um, Stampin Storage they're heavy duty and they come um, on these like thick cardboard pieces here. So I kind of lose my dies once in a while. So when I'm mass producing, I found this is the easiest to do. So I su suggest that um, maybe you can do that too when you're working with multiple sentiments and designs. I kind of want to make my list pads a little bit different from each other. So I've got five or six different sentiments and different designs here and some just quick embellishments here. I've used some rhinestones here. They're a little bit colored, um, but simple. I didn't want to make anything really loose because if people put these in their purse or what have you, um, I didn't want it to get all messed up. So the pens, I'll, um, I'll show you my Buna pens and suggest where you can find those. But um, anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna st work start to finish on this project. So you'll see how I cut the paper and also um, just some tips. So I've got my trimmer here and let me just get these list pads out of the way. I'm working with eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So um, I don't have a lot of the 12 by 12, so I'm making do with what I have. And that's why you see I use retired and, and um, current products. So what you wanna do is your measurement your, on your height is gonna be eight and three quarters. So this piece is eight and a half by 11. So I've gotta go this way here and I'm going to eight and three quarters and I'm just gonna simply make a cut. Okay, you're gonna save this because you're gonna use it. All right, so now I'm gonna rotate the paper and I'm just going to cut off a 16th of an inch. So the measurement on this is eight and seven sixteenths. So that is the one, the small tick mark to the right side of eight and a half inches. So it's just a really small piece that you've cut off. All right, so now we're gonna slide this over and we're gonna score. All right, and so I'm gonna score it, let's see. I'm gonna score it three and five eighths. Okay, I'm gonna also score it four inches and four and three eighths. All right, so we are done with this piece. I'm just gonna put this, the trimmer aside because we'll need that later. All right, so now we're just going to fold and burnish all of our, the three score lines. And you will definitely need a um, bone folder to work with because you need to have these really, really um, burnished well so it'll lay flat for you. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna work on the center score line. And if you notice, when this opens up, okay, you've got three score lines and you wanna fold it on the middle score line. So on the top, you can see about like three eighths of an inch here. Um, and we're going to cut the, um, the part where your pen is going to hold, be um, held in. So I go down about, I just eyeball this. I find with the longer pens, I go down about two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna make a snip here and another one here about a half an inch, okay? Snip right up to the score line there, okay? So now we're gonna open it up and we're going to use our tear and tape. So you've got to use some very strong adhesive. Um, just regular, like your snail is not going to be good enough. You need to find something sticky. So if you have uh, double face tape, some score, score tape, ATG, maybe if it's, I find that the tear and tape works great and I'll have a link to you, um, that on my blog. Also what you're going to want to do is take your bone folder and just really give that a press. I've got my take a pick tool and I'm just gonna go underneath this here to lift it up. It's so super quick and fast and these are just little tips that I'm gonna give to you so when you're mass producing a lot of these, you don't wanna waste time. So great um, tool here. It's very, very sharp edge here. So you'll have to be careful. So now look at the sticky part here. You're gonna fold this all the way over to the furthest score line on the right side. Okay, and then you're gonna, just gonna give it a nice press. Again, I use my poem folder. Then we're gonna you push um, the little holder out there for the pen out with your finger. And then we're just going to fold this back over on top of each other. And I just give it a nice um, burnish again. So we're just creasing those um, score lines ever so. All right, so that's our holder. So we've got that aside. I'll well, set this aside. And let's see, the next step is I'm gonna cut the um, designer series paper. This is the perennial essence paper, and this is a directional pattern. So you'll have to be careful using directional paper. So what I wanna do is, um, this is the top of the paper here. So I want the top of the paper on the left side, and hopefully I'm in the camera here. Um, and I'm going to cut this. Let's see, we need an eight and a half piece, so eight and a half inches okay you're going to keep this for something to use later because i admit all what i'm going to do with all my pieces i'm going to make either cards or the three by three cards that i sell in my craft fair all right and now i'm going to rotate it and i'm going to cut two pieces that's three and a quarter by eight and a half so that's one and two and that's for the front outside and inside cover and now for the back cover you need to go um, three and three quarters inches okay so three page um, papers there okay now this piece here that's left over I like to just basically figure out what's the best pattern so I kind of like all these flowers here I'm gonna cut this to three let's see what is it um, oh boy I think it's three and three quarters, but no, it's, it's three and a quarter, sorry. If it's not, I'm gonna save that and kind of recut it. But this is one and a half inch. So one and a half by um, three and a quarter. If that's wrong, we'll figure that out. And then I think we're all done with the trimmer. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these on the front in the inside cover and on the back side. So let me just show you again on one I created. So we're gonna put the paper there, on here, and here. Now you don't really have to if you don't want to, but I just found that it just looks so much better if you add the paper um, to the front, back, and inside. All right, so I use, for this project, I use my ATG gun um, tape glider. This thing is so, so big. But um, I find that um, I don't want to use this tear and tape because um, you don't want to like use a lot of more of expensive adhesive. But the ATG tape, I can get um, two in a package from Michaels and use a coupon. So it's really not that expensive. And I found that I made 18 of these 
and I got, I used one roll, so that's not too bad. All right, so now I'm just gonna put this down on the front panel here. All right, so that's good. And now we're just gonna do the same thing for the inside. And this print, um, perennial essence paper is so beautiful. Either side works. Um, the designs and floral images are just very, very beautiful. All right, so the reason why I put the um, adhesive on the middle two pieces or sections there is because you don't want it to buckle um, so um, that's and plus you this is a holder that's going to be reusable and we want it to look nice and this actually just gives an extra sturdy um, piece to it all right so one more piece this is the notice the back side is a little bit bigger so three and three quarters by the eight and a half and again, I'm just going to put some um, adhesive right on those areas there. And I'm going to open this up here. Make sure my pattern, I must put it on upside down. Make sure your pattern is going the appropriate way. Okay, so isn't that beautiful? I just love this paper here. Again, I'm just going to push that out there. All right, so that's our holder. All right, the next thing we need to do is get a list pad. So I've got actually three of them here. And this is what they look like unwrapped, okay? So you've got the green, you've got pink, and you've got black. So these are pen and gear list pads. So you've gotta be careful because I found um, another one, and it's in my, the ones that I've done, it was only 50 sheets. So be careful, really look at your labels. Um, so this is your best bang for the buck, 80 sheets at 88 cents. And they come with the magnets on there. And like I said, I keep the magnets on. So I scored with this one. There was only two patterns like this, but I thought it looked really nice with um, this paper here. So we'll be using this one. And uh, what I'm gonna do actually first is we are going to make the um, holder here, which holds that list pad. Okay, it's just a, I do tone on tone so you don't see it, but um, it's simply used to slide in that list pad. So to do that, what I do is, because sometimes your list pads are just a little different in size. So I just use that strip. Now this is a strip that we, I said to keep for later. All right, so I'm just gonna burnish this. I'm bringing it all the way to the top. Okay, and I'm just gonna burnish this again. All right, so now I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna use my tear and tape again and I'm gonna put a piece right here and I'm also gonna put a piece right here. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a nice little press. I'm gonna release the backings here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a little bit of this multi-purpose tumble liquid glue and I'm just gonna put a little bit right here Hopefully it'll come out here. There we go. That's like way too much, but I was pressing too hard. Okay, I'm just gonna fold this over, make sure my edges are good and even, and just give it a nice press. Now I'm gonna rotate this. See that glue's right there, but that's okay. No one will ever see it. I'm gonna add the tear and tape to the top and the bottom. Give it a nice press, release it. And I'm gonna add a little bit more multi-purpose glue because what you don't want is to have this thing falling apart. So just that extra liquid glue is um, beneficial. All right, so let's bring in the list pad holder again. Now you've gotta be careful because you pretty much got one shot at this. So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up and I'm bringing this uh, edge up I'm kind of eyeballing it because you want about a quarter of an inch on the top right and bottom side so that feels pretty good bring that over flip it and now I'm just going to press it with my bone folder here okay you want that that adhesive to stick okay so there we go so now when you run out you use the last one you can get another one and we'll just slide this back in 
and we're good to go. So there's really no need to take that magnet off. I know some people do that, but I don't see where it's necessary to do that. All right, all right, so now we're gonna embellish this. I've already cut out a piece of cardstock. It's matching Blackberry Bliss, and that's gonna go right about here. And then this is a good size, so we did cut that correctly, but I'm gonna flip it on this side so I can have a contrast. So again, we're just gonna take our adhesive and we're just gonna run it on all four sides because we want this to stick. Don't want it to come apart. And I'm just gonna line this up and it's edge to edge with a quarter of an inch border on the top and the bottom. And now I'm just gonna add more adhesive to the back side of this panel. And I'm gonna look at the pattern and I notice that this is just a little bit over the edge, so I'm gonna take my paper snips. It's just really a fine line there. Just a little bit, but that was bothering me, so I wanted to make sure that was cut off. I'm just gonna look at the pattern. Do I want it to go this way, or do I want it to go this way? So I think I'm just gonna go have it go this way. And it's edge to edge, and just give it a nice press so it sticks, okay? So now we're going ready for stamping. Again, I'm gonna um, use the Enjoy Life stamp set. I've already got it mounted on a block. I need my Blackberry Bliss ink, which is the same color as the cardstock. And this is from Stampin' Up, which is still, it's a, in, um, a, a current color. So I'm just gonna stamp down and up. That, that font just catches my eye, so I just love it there. And I said earlier, we're gonna be working with punches because when you're mass producing, you wanna be able to be really quick. This is a two inch circle punch. And we're just gonna punch this out. Okay. And then I've also got the um, Starburst circle, or this is a Starburst punch. And we're just gonna punch that out. Super quick and super fast. And we'll add adhesive to the back side of this two inch circle. The adhesive's not running very well because it's so super humid across. Oh my gosh, it's really hot in my craft room tonight. <laughs> All right, so we are going to add more adhesive to this side here. Let's bring the notepad back in. And then we're just going to simply put this on here but a nice press. Now you can leave this as is if you wanted to, um, but what I'm gonna do is, um, I've got this, um, let me show you, it's a way over here, hold on. I got this little like bin full of like in embellishments. There's all kinds of die cuts in there, leaves, heart, you know, all kinds of good stuff. You no, know, I suggest that you don't use anything bulky. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to find something that will work. Now I had a wooden something in here. Let's just see. Let's see if these rhinestones will work. Yeah, those will work. These were from a paper pumpkin kit that I uh, got a while back. So we're just going to use extra. I'm just going to put a rhinestone here and over here. Just a little bit of embellishment added from, you know, just to make it jazzed up a little bit. Again, you don't want a lot of bulk. Now to sell these, I have to abide by the angel policy. So I do stamp my um, personalized stamp and the copyright Stampin' Up on here. So I'll just bring that in. And I'm putting it on the back side here because it's the only place I can stamp. And then that's my information. You probably can't see this because it's tone on tone, but I'll bring it up to the camera so you can. Just close this ink pad up. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it's got my information stamping up, so we're good to go. All right, so that is our holder. Now my pens. Now, a lot of people ask me where I buy my pens. I get them wherever they're on sale. So if it's online, if it's at, you know, any kind of office supply store. So let me just show you a few that I've gotten here. Like again, I. This, you can't see it all, but I've got a whole bin here um, full of pens. These are all like purchase on sale. Um, 
a lot of them I get from Dollar Tree, but a lot of them I get elsewhere too. So whenever I go into a store, store that sells pens, I always go there and see what's on sale. So what I do is I like to try to find a coordinating pen. So I just go to my bin and say, okay, what's gonna work? So I actually think, um, I think I'm gonna have to open this one up. <laughs> Because I think I want that purple pen and I don't have any left. Alright, so let's see what the purple one will look like. Yeah, I think it's fine. Alright, so I'm just going to slide that in there and that works beautifully. So, that's what it all looks like. And pricing okay because everybody asked me about my pricing so since I've never sold these before I really don't know um, but I do know I want to make I've got 88 cents into this and I've probably got with the adhesive and cardstock in the pen probably it cost me a dollar fifty maybe to entirely make this whole project so I'm actually gonna try to Maybe it was a little bit more, but um, I'm going to try to sell these for $4 because I honestly think these are really nice um, and I really try to make high quality um, paper products and um, that people, customers are going to love to use and, you know, and reuse them because it is reusable. So I think that's, um, I think $4 is fair. So to do a, like a price point type of thing, $4 each or probably two for maybe seven. I've got to think about it a little bit, but I think that's what I'm going to do. But let me show you a few others that I have made just to give you an idea of kind of what I did. And please use what you have in your stock. So this one I just used, um, it's an embellishment. It's a wooden, um, Butterfly here, which I colored with a um, blends. And then there's this one, just put a heart with a little rhinestone on there with the sentiment. This one, I used um, some linen thread and created a nice little bow. And here's another one with just a little heart. Again, this is what it looks like. I mean, I should probably open those up as I show you. I just absolutely love this paper. And this was like a freebie in um geez what was it celebration but i have like three packs of it so i just love this butterfly paper but anyway so this is what i kind of chose the black one here to tie in with the black here's another one of the butterfly papers here another one just a simple embellishment there here's another wooden flower i just love this stamp uh, may your day bloom with beauty and joy and then this one I thought is, is I'm actually going to send this one to my aunt. Um, so she's struggling with some medical issues right now. So I thought um, having a list pad handy for her um, would be um, helpful. This one I thought would be for a kid, a child, because it's got that fun safari paper. All right, again, a pink pen. I try to coordinate the colors. This one's fun too. So for a little boy. Um, I thought this was really cute. Every little kindness makes the world brighter. So this little bird here on top of the alligator. All right, so live with passion, laugh out loud, love deeply with a little heart and rhinestone. Um, this one is set sail in the direction of your dreams with a nice little glittered leaf in a flower and rhinestone. Every little kindness makes the world brighter with a wooden element there. And this was last year's Nature's um, Poem paper. I just love it, and I have actually two pa packs of it. But um, I think I'm keeping this one for myself because I just love the color combinations there. And then to package them, um, this is how I'm going to sell. Now these were, um, I'll put a link, clearbags.com, I believe, um, or Amazon, I'm not really sure. But I'll, just, I'll give you the information in the description and in my blog. Um, but it's just a clear cello bag and it was a little bit too big so what I did was I just folded it over here and taped it in spots and then I added my personal information so I think it's highly um, like you should really put your contact information here just because I've gotten several 
special orders by just doing this. People have contacted me and especially around Christmas time, um, the employee gifts, they just, um, they like to order these um, ahead of time. So um, this is a great way of actually giving, getting additional business um, from your craft fair. All right, so hopefully you've learned something new today and you enjoyed the craft fair series. I'm not sure what my project next um, project episode eight will or nine will be, but uh, hopefully it will be sooner than the last one between seven and eight. But anyway, for all your stampin' supplies that I use today, please visit my website at inspiredbygram.com. Thanks for watching.